What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here, and welcome to a different kind of video today. I'm going to be showing you guys my decks right now that I'm using, and the decks that I think will be doing well in the future, and what I will be using now and in the future. So, uh, a huge balance uh, update in Scrolls has been happening recently. Scrolls like Bombard and Grievelock Elder and uh, Bloodline Taint were the most important changed scrolls. Now, like, Curse Decay is like almost gone I guess because the nerf to Bloodline Taint took away its curse too which is huge and then uh, Gravelock Elder a nerf to Gravelock Elder obviously makes the whole Gravelock archetype um, makes them get nerfed a lot and then nerfs to Bombard and Machinated does hurt range energy so I figure what I'll do today is I will show you guys one deck from each faction um, so if you're only if you only like to play with one faction, you get to see something that you like, and I'll be choosing to show what I think will be the best deck for that faction going forward. So what I think after this whole slew of uh, balance changes, what will be the best deck in that faction right now, and what I'll be using for the future and after I've played a little bit, I think these are some pretty good decks. So first, let's start with order. Uh, I think Tempo Order, a deck similar to this one, um, will be the best deck. And uh, this is my my deck, my Tempo Order deck. It has 27 creatures, a lot of creatures. Basically what you want to do with this deck is uh, fill the board with creatures, uh, stay on top of the board and control it with your flips, pothers, and your haste, rest of me potion, and busting of haste. And... Uh, pick away at the idols enough that um, you can win with some decimations and it, it's pretty aggressive so here's the curve if you want to see that a lot of two drops and three drops he's definitely a more aggressive type of order um, you can kind of category you can categorize order by looking at uh, some certain telling scrolls like you can know if something's Lake in order if you see any Imperial resources. And then like aggro order, you could probably see this is aggro or tempo because it has five one drops and three decimations. So basically what you want to do with this deck is hopefully you have a good curve in the beginning with like a one drop, two drop, three drop, four drop, stuff like that. You can use the mulligan to increase your chances of getting a good curve. And um, it's very important that you have like a two drop of Ducal Infantryman. And then you can go into like uh, Royal Skirmisher and um, then into the very strong four drops. Look at the new art for Ducal Skirmisher. I, I do like the new Ducal Skirmisher art in the scroll. I feel like the unit is, he doesn't look as cool as before. But I guess change we'll just have to get used to. But uh, I know I don't really like the chainmail on the Ducal Infantry in here. I think it looks kind of weird. But whatever, we're talking about the decks in this video. So some people do think it's a little bit more mid-range order my deck because it has two Gal Defenders, but these guys are just purely in it because sometimes growth can get a little too fast for me and I have to stop those early Braves, and this guy just like deadens them in their tracks unless they have an Earth and Mirth. So I really like, and similarly how Gal Defender just stops growth, I have two Effigies of the Queen in the deck because this just stops energy. Although it was nerfed a little bit and it doesn't have water anymore, it still just stops all the... Uh, Dark damage from energy really 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 well so I advise running a couple of these in the deck only two of this and only two of this because they're really for specific matchups but it's nice to have them in your arsenal just in case and they're not bad scrolls against the other factions either I mean FG the Queen I guess is doesn't really have a use against any faction other than energy because because decay because uh, poison doesn't affect magic resistance and I guess it would help against decimations and kabonks, but whatever. Um, but still, four health wall for two, which is not terrible if you need to get something down. And so the the heart of this deck, I'd say, is the skirmishers, the royal skirmisher, and the ducal skirmisher. Um, you're basically trying to have these guys down and buff their attacks with. Uh, other creatures such as Rolaros and Royal Vanguard. Um, only two of each of those. Rolaros BC is unique and Vanguard because I don't think you need three five drops. I think it's a little much. 
And then you also have scrolls like, yeah, and Google Instruments is also another attack buffer for those relentless guys. Then you have Focus, and Eternal Sword, and even Decimation can really help your skirmishers plow through a row because it will uh, deal some damage to your opponent's creatures. Decimations are also very good against uh, like growth for taking out veterans and sometimes even decay for getting rid of Meyer Shamblers after they soul stole your Winged Soldier or your Aging Knight. But yeah, and also like Wing Chill is very good against growth. So I guess that's all I have to say about uh, this tempo order deck. I think it will be actually the here bold prediction right here. This is going to be the best deck in the meta. Like next this is the next big deck. It's going to surpass Grave Locks, which is probably considered the best deck right now. Considering I've been like number one and like number two, like the past like over a month with Grave Locks. So I think this deck will sort of top because uh, its main weakness was Curse Decay. Now that Curse Decay is like nerfed to Oblivion, uh, no pun intended. I think uh, this deck shouldn't have too many weaknesses, especially with like nice defense against growth and flips and stuff as like removal against like other factions so yeah moving on so i'll be using this deck a lot in rick i think i'm actually going to use it for the scrolls guide open we'll see about that next i will show the energy deck i think will be the best i still think it's going to be grave locks i don't think the nerf to elder is enough to say for me to say that range energy will be stronger than grave lock energy um, I definitely think that the health buff that Gravelock Elder gave was always more important than the attack buff. Because it's really just the bulkiness, bulkiness of, this, of the Gravelocks that it's hard for people to deal with. Um, I mean, taking away the extra attack buff will be really um, different. It'll hurt them a lot, but they also got this Lingering Cell buffed a lot, the Gravelock Burrows. And... Uh, it can really help you. It could really have your opponent shy away from doing big plays like thunder surges and um, sudden eruptions and like quakes and frost scales and stuff like that because they likely have enough attack to like win the game because you'll get so much attack from it. So, like, I, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of videos recently on my channel with this because This is what I've been playing with the most, and uh, so I don't think I have to go too in depth on it. Basically, just. Get the grave locks out and cross your fingers you draw elders and freaks and hope you get a good curve and all that stuff and you have a nice removal with burn thunder surges mount dispersals not much to talk about i have copper automatons and locking brood nice one cap down creatures which work well with fury copper automaton works well with iron whip as well and iron whip is really good synergy with grave lock freak because you kind of get how that works um i wanted i have the hired smuggler uh as the only as actually no grave lock I mean, Copper Automaton is also a non gravelock creature, but really, like, the Higher Smuggler is the only non gravelock creature that doesn't destroy itself. And that's because Gravelock, uh, Higher Smuggler is really strong, gets you a uh, really nice um, card advantage early in the game if the opponent can't deal with it, so it's one of the best creatures in the game. And I have it, have it just drawing Snargle Omelets, which help you ramp up. And like that Tempo Order deck, I uh, have some specific scrolls for specific matchups, like Potion of Resistance is amazing versus Growth. Growth's only real weapon against it is a Rumble, which uh, not all growth decks, will, growth decks run. And um, yeah, Potion of Resistance is amazing. Also just makes something live like indefinitely against like order and energy as well. Really the only thing um, you're vulnerable to with Potion of Resistance is a damage curse. So. Yeah, Potion of Resistance is awesome. I like three of them in the deck. Um, then I have Tick Bombs. These are really only in against, like... Actually, against two decks, this is good against. Obviously, all really rain, all really energy decks, because you're always going to see Forges and Oculus Cannons. So this can really be nice. Tick Bomb also is very good at taking down um, structures with Potion of Resistance. So that's true. Um, and also, Tick Bomb is really good against late game order with... Warding Stones and especially Waking Stones. Sometimes it's really hard to break through those Waking Stones and Tick Bomb is just perfect for that. It crashes your opponent off guard and it's so amazing. So um, I definitely suggest having a couple of these. Um, your Potion Resistance in the deck. And then uh, 
like I said, just like play the game pretty normally. Just try to have a nice card. I only have two of the unique guy again, just like the relish only two. If you can let both of these two uniques that are really strong, I think three is a little overboard. Um, the best grave locks in the deck that I think you should focus on really trying to get out are the Elder, the Freak, and the Guard. I think the Guard is amazing. His uh, Pillage effect is really strong. The worst ones, probably the Outcast, but it's a nice curve at three. Uh, it really rounds out the curve. And Raider's not, not too good either, especially now that Elder doesn't increase his attack. And he only have two Machinated, so I'm actually considering... But Grave Lock Burrow might get massive attack from the Grave Lock Burrows. You know, you might, like, Thunder Surge your... I could, the Grave Lock Burrows can make for some really fun plays now, because you could, like, Thunder Surge your own side and have lethal. So, that can be pretty cool. And, uh... The, uh... Yeah, the curve for this deck is not as smooth as it was for the Tempo Order deck I have. It's a little... Like, you only have uh, one creature at three. Um... I don't know, it's just, it doesn't always work your way, you kind of have to cross your fingers, you have a, like a good starting hand for this deck, like, for the aggro order deck, I'd like, I'd say a good starting hand would be, um, having a two drop and a three drop, or a one drop and a three drop, like, having a one or a two drop and then a three drop to play, this deck, I'd probably just take the starting hand if it had a burn in it, because chances are you, you I don't know. It's just it feels like this this deck does not get as great draws. But if if you uh, can get the elders out early enough, then you'll you should be fine. And I think Gravelock decks will uh, overcome the elder nerf because of Gravelock Burrows. Not quite as good as they used to be, but they will still be a strong force on the ladder. I do believe. And next, what I am going to go over is everybody's favorite faction, Growth. I think Ag Growth is going to be the best. So. I also thought aggro order would be better than linking order, just like aggro growth will be better than linking growth. So, not much has changed from this aggro growth deck. There are a few notable changes. Um, obviously, everybody likes running Earth and Earth now. Some people don't think it's that good, it's just two champion rings smashed together, but that's the point. It's two scrolls for one scroll. And it's. It's really good when you put on like a relentless unit or a one countdown unit. And that's why this deck has so many one countdown units and relentless units like Gravehawk, um, and instead of instead of like uh, Kinfolk Ranger or Vengeful Vetter, and like Great Wolfin, even though I don't want Brother of the Wolf. Um, and then rallies are there just to get some of the non one countdown creatures to attack off to in like the relentless guys. So. This is uh, similar to aggro or order. You're just trying to have a really nice early curve and pound the idols while taking out the opponent units. The most important scroll in the deck, I'd say, is probably Earthborn Mystic because then you're going to draw your stag hearts and your earthen mirths, which just make you, makes your guys stronger. Uh, I have actually three rumbles. Not necessary to have three rumbles in aggro deck, but I do like them because it's really growth's only way to get around stuff. It helps you get to the idols. Um, it, it helps you break through orders like defense with like wing shields and stuff like that. And it just it's it's a pretty interesting scroll. Um, obviously your haste units are really valuable. Your veterans and your ragged wolves. I think everybody knows that. Get an early vetter out and have some braves, earthborn mystics, and you'll be just fine <laughs> as aggro growth. Um, if you get good early draws, you are just set. Ancestral totems are really good against decay. Um, if you get these guys down, um, it's just really nice because your gradual just become two attack. Your veterans become four attack, um, and decay doesn't have a good way to deal with structures besides a road. And that scrolls and that scrolls in growth, anyways. But I'm sure you guys all have been staring at the screen. The notable addition to this deck than my last like aggro growth deck is the additions of fjords of vigor. This is a used to, it's a lingering spell, lingering spell that was uh, reworked in the last balance patch a couple days ago, and now instead of it used to be all enchanted units you control get plus one attack. You know it's like man like it's a lingering spell that temporarily increases your attack. Earthworm Mystic does the same thing, but it's amazing. But now, over the linger four. Units you control costing three or less have plus one attack. So let's look at the units we control of. Uh, it costs three or less. 
all the creatures in the top row here. Actually, is it most creatures in the deck? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so most creatures in the deck uh, will gain attack from the Fjords of Vigor. Come out with the Ancestral Totem and Crimson Bulls, I think, and the, all the enchantments in a 30 creature deck. I think this is going to be very potent. Um, you you could have two attack Racket Wolves without even playing the Ancestral Totem. Your Brave will have three attack. And, um, and the, really the other only addition besides Fears of Vigor is Earthborn Keeper. A lot of people don't run that. I think I th I think he'll work well because he'll, he's only three cost, so he will get the a buff from the Fjords of Vigor. And he's really just like a little bigger brave. I mean, Wildling works. So I don't see why this guy can't work. He's kind of is like a Wildling, almost. So we'll see. Um, I think this deck will be pretty pretty strong. I think it does get stopped a little bit by aggro order because of aggro order's defense sometimes. But it's still a pretty potent deck with the Earthborn Mystic, like getting out the Earthen Birds. Like probably the best deck in the game is and might always be aggro growth that gets a perfect curve. Like that's just almost unstoppable. If you can get the if you can go like Vetter Vetter, Mystic, Brave, Brave, and like getting champions on them. That's just like almost like you can't even come back from that. To happen is more than you think. So I know everybody, uh, everybody tends to hate on growth, but it's a pretty potent deck, and it's a nice deck for beginners to play because a lot of the scrolls are kind of cheap to get, and it's pretty simple to play. So next, but not least, or last but not least, Mono Decay. This is the Decay deck that I think will be the best Decay deck. And it's it's really more of an old-fashioned creature-heavy Watergen kind of deck. As we all know, lately, the past month or so, um, the meta has really been... The only Decay deck that's been prevalent is Curse Decay with like Halls of Omlasa and I really tried to ramp ahead with that. And I think that Creature Heavy Watch Again Decay will make a comeback. This is the kind of deck that was actually the main Decay deck before all this Curse Decay shenanigans happened. Um, and because of the huge nerf to Bloodline Taint, I think Curse Decay, also the nerf to uh, uh, whatever it's called, Curse Presence. I think Curse Decay, that kind of deck type, will be no longer played in high ranks. I think this kind of Creature Heavy Decay will make a comeback because I know, it is nerfed slightly. Uh, it's not as good as it used to be uh, because Witch Doctor used to have 5 attack. For some reason, they nerfed Lifesteal. I thought it was just a really cool scroll before. Now he's like, I mean, still good, I guess, but it was cooler when he healed his whole health um, and it only happened when he killed a creature. That kind of fit the case theme. I don't know why they changed it. But he's still decent. Um, but they nerfed him a little bit. What else got nerfed? I mean, Damon Curse got taxing. That's that's a little change. Um, that won't really affect this kind of deck that much. But other things in this deck are the same as they used to be. So I don't think that the deck will have too much of a problem. Um, with the... Uh, and I also have an Urva in here just because of the three Harvesters. It's just fun to, if you get it, you might be able to get an Urva out and just wreck havoc. I really haven't played with Urva much since it came out. I know a lot of people love Urva. I haven't done a lot of testing with her, but I think she'll work well. I think we all know that actually uh, this kind of Mono Decay just crushes growth because of which Doctor Growth can't really break through. Um, like we went over, growth just does not move uh, opponent creatures well um, and then yeah, the humans around which doctor really stops growth as well as harvesters and rot eaters all those guys like if they're quaked they don't even care um, and then soul seals destroy growth as well um, so and also bloodline taints I mean earth uh, infectious blights I think is still good even without without uh, bloodline taint you can still curse things with Curse Monger. Um, notably, I 
Oh, this that's what happened. I didn't... Never mind, it has. All right, yeah, so I have brainless in the deck here. It was three costs, then it went to four costs, then it went back to three costs. It should be at three costs, and now this helps out the curve for this kind of deck a lot. Um, having brainless and soul steel in the deck is really nice. Um, nobody likes it when they curse your creature with curse monger, and then you get brainless. So, yeah, you play this deck basically by um, curving up with, like, your ripper, tribesmen, getting the humans in front of your Rot Eater, Witch Doctor, your Harvester, and then getting your Oblivion Seekers in front, and slowly pick away and go with a big Necrogeddon finish, or even with a Watcher. Watchers are really good against if you're facing like Structure Energy, you need to do a lot of direct idle damage. Um, I have Mudo Fighter in here. He's kind of uh, the replacement for the old Blight Bear to fill out the last 3 drop slot. Um, now that he's 4 cost because of the Poison nerf, I don't really like him anymore in the deck. Notably, I do have Elmer Hunter in the deck. I mean, Elmer Hunter was always in a uh, creature heavy amount of decay, but a lot of people took him out because of the nerf to 4 health. I think he'll be okay because not that many people play, um, play decay right now. So that means not that many languids, which means this guy might be able to do okay. He is human, you know. We'll see. So, yeah, there's a there's a thing I'm on the verge of here. I if, notably don't have any languids of my own. I think it's the issue of languid or infectious blight for me. I think I actually just changed my mind right now, and I'm gonna put in the languid instead of the infectious blight. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're both they're both very good scrolls. So, I guess that is it. So those are uh, the one deck for each faction, the four, not necessarily the four best decks of the meta that are going to come out of this, um, because I do think maybe ranged energy and gridlock energy will be near the top, even with the nerf to both of those decks. Uh, but I think this is the going to be the high ranked version decks of the best decks for each faction so this is what i will be playing these four decks um i'll have links in the description to the decks in the description so you guys can check them out yourself and hopefully you can use them to uh join me up here so i guess that'll be it for today I know um, I haven't had videos that often lately. It's like been like every couple of days, um, which I'm trying to fix. But I don't know. I don't want to burn myself out now because I really want to go for the daily uploads when a release happens. I'm going to try to cater towards newer players, but don't worry, veterans that are watching my channel now, I will try to keep keep it sophisticated for, this, uh, for those veteran scrollgers. Um, but yeah, so, uh, that'll be it for today. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.